take two. So um, my topic is about uh, training uh, some of the DOT staff on how to inspect construction zones for quality control and safety. I want to uh, give three perspectives uh, today. So first I want to give a quick background on virtual reality and then uh, talk to you about some of the uh, concepts of work zone inspection and what it entails, what, is, what are DOTs required to do by law and so forth. And then uh, third, I want to give you um, uh, some of our experiences on how we uh, came up with a VR uh, training module to help uh, Missouri State's uh, Department of Transportation. So uh, to start with, so the history of virtual reality dates back to the early 1800s. So this, what you see up uh, on the screen is a depiction, a 360 painting of the Battle of uh, Borodino. That's one of the uh, deadliest days in uh, Napoleonic Wars, right? So uh, between France and uh, Russia. So what you see is, you know, there are different uh, uh, points where they show some casualties and um, at that uh, time. So that's early 1800s. Then we move on to the mid um, uh, to late 1800s where uh, we had this craze about stereoscopes. So essentially you have uh, uh, a slight variation of the same image, one for the left eye, one for the right eye, that creates a illusion of depth, right? So that uh, is more of a, a, back in the day, a 3D view of what we call virtual reality today. And then in the 80s and 90s, at least when I was growing up, I was big on uh, both Nintendo and Sega products uh, and arcade machines and so forth. Uh, and then obviously the movies, um, you know, uh, Lawnmower Man, The Matrix, and to give a Disney example, uh, or, uh, because of our esteemed guest, you know, Tron and Tron Legacy and so forth. So there's been VR in uh, the movie industry, again, late 90s, early 2000s. The past decade or so, I would say since uh, 2003 uh, and so forth, we have had a proliferation of these uh, very inexpensive uh, consumer electronic side of things, right? So the uh, headsets, you know, you name it, Oculus, HTC, and so forth, that gave us researchers a uh, excellent opportunity to try it out on new areas that haven't been uh, explored in the past, other than gaming and entertainment. So in terms of training, uh, when we started looking at what can we do for improving training for our state agencies and education, we looked at what was available out there, and we found a few things um, that have been done. So for example, um, law enforcement agencies use that for uh, training their uh, new recruits. We have uh, some examples of atle athletics, like football players and uh, uh, golf players uh, using VR to improve their swing and so forth. And then uh, the bottom example is the UPS has a uh, training program for their drivers to navigate uh, urban intersections and urban uh, road networks, how do you park and so forth. Same thing with Walmart has a big uh, VR-based training and education uh, platform. Uh, in medicine, uh, on our campus at University of Missouri, we have some colleagues who uh, work with surgeons and anesthesiologists to uh, create a, um, a room, the surgery room, uh, to train residents on what actually goes on in that, uh, the different steps and so forth. Same with, uh, there I have projects on helping autism, uh, kids with autism, how do you uh, cope and so forth. Which brings us to my third uh, part, which is how does uh, this uh, help with uh, work zones and construction zones and how do we monitor those, inspect those uh, on a regular basis. Uh, for those not in the work zone community, we have what's called a final rule for work zone safety and mobility. That's the uh, uh, law, Code of Federal Regulations has codified it. What you see up there is a, s a snippet of what applies to training, right? So states shall require that personnel involved in the development, design, implementation, operation, inspection, and enforcement, and so forth, uh, 
to be trained. States shall require periodic training updates uh, uh, that reflect changing industry practices and state processes and procedures, right? So every state DOT does this, all 50 states, uh, have some pro in-house programs in place or they hire someone to do the training for them. Now over the years, there's been a lot of innovation on, in the work zone sector on intelligent transportation systems. Um, we had new forms of traffic control, but there hasn't been much innovation on the training side. We still do, the current practice is to use PowerPoint slides, pretty static uh, PowerPoint slides, where they go over, again, those of you not familiar with um, transportation, the main manual for signage and temporary traffic control is the MUTCD, Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Every state has uh, an adoption period. Um, Missouri adopted it, the 20, 2009 edition in uh, 2011. It's all included in what they call the engineering policy guide. So essentially, these trainees look at all these uh, documents, and then they are led into the field, go inspect the work zones, they'll uh, be given a checklist, right? So that's pretty much uh, the entirety of the current training practice. So what we offer to the Missouri Department of Transportation is, what if we supplement um, your learning with an immersive module? So the learning module, we recreated that to We synthesized the last five years of inspection reports, lots of pictures, videos, and so forth, to come up with a good set of examples on what the trainee will see once they're out in the field. And on the immersive side, we pretty much uh, uh, immerse them in the passenger seat of a moving vehicle as they move through the work zone. They can inspect uh, and call out what's right, what's not right, and so forth, right? So essentially, the remaining slides, I'll be walking you through these two, uh, more on the immersive side, but a few examples of learning module also. Uh, again, just to uh, give some background uh, on work zones, so that's the layout of a what we call a temporary traffic control zone that you drive through, uh, you know, Northern Virginia, Baltimore, wherever uh, around here, if you're from here. We break it down into four components. There is what's called the advanced warning area of the work zone. Then you go into a transition area where you will start seeing some uh, work trucks and so forth, and then there's the actual uh, activity area where there is the actual work going on, you know, mill milling, uh, concrete pouring, and so forth. And there is a buffer space both at the beginning and at the end, and then you have a termination area. So essentially there is signage, temporary traffic control devices, there's a lot of action going on within these four uh, elements that need to be inspected and uh, fixed if there are any uh, problems. Just to give you a couple of examples, these are uh, all from real world work zones. Okay, so you can see the extent of uh, um, poor signage, bad uh, traffic control devices, and so on. Some of these I don't need to add uh, taglines. You can uh, see what's wrong there. Again, for example, the speed limit sign is blurry. You can't uh, uh, read what's on there. Again, these are all, we synthesize, like I said, five years of Missouri has seven districts. So every district has uh, work zones inspected every other year or so. So we got all that data and created a good um, library, library of these uh, different uh, uh, signages. All right, moving on to the, the virtual reality um, module, the immersive module. We followed uh, three steps. The first step is, uh, uh, we created the, the geometric network, the traffic control devices. We use uh, many of the same software uh, our keynote speaker brought up this morning, uh, SketchUp. Uh, we use Civil 3D uh, for that part. In step two, we use uh, Unity, one of the uh, gaming engines for moving the vehicle and so forth. And then um, uh, in this particular study, we used Oculus for uh, porting into the headset, but we could have used HTC or any other uh, um, inexpensive headsets. Um, again, that's just a uh, picture, a couple of pictures showing you left-hand side is the roadway geometrics. We created a uh, uh, Interstate 70, uh, it's two lanes each way, and going to one lane um, due to the work zone. Right-hand side is a typical MUTCD-based dimensions of a road work ahead sign that we, again, created those objects in, the, uh, in SketchUp. This is a couple of screenshots of how the Unity 
uh, vehicle coding and then um, the scripts. Again, not much to infer from here, just to show you that that's the software we used. Uh, that's actually my graduate student, Dale. He couldn't be here, but uh, he's the guinea pig on all the tests. Uh, again, it's a Oculus is a 360, it allows a 360 degree immersive experience. You can look around um, what's going on around the vehicle when you're driving. So we created two scenarios, one to give some training practice, and then the second one is where we actually test how they're performing. Um, again, like I said, they're, uh, both, they both include uh, poor signage, bad devices, and uh, all kinds of examples we learned from uh, past five years of data. Let me see if um, we can play this video. Okay, can and uh, Kiara Lord, she'll be here, but I don't see her, so. That's okay, I do have a plan B just to show you a couple of pictures that someone in, in that uh, embedded environment would um, uh, see when they're driving through. Um, top left, you, we had a combination of signs that were in poor uh, condition and also poor color. Uh, so you'll see the right-hand side, you, there is a almost pinkish road work ahead sign. Uh, there are some issues with uh, uh, those uh, markers at the bottom also being covered. So that's again not compliant. Uh, the right hand side, one of the signs is tilted. Uh, so again, these were both in training and uh, testing. So in the testing phase, we essentially asked the subjects to call out anything that they saw was off because they have been through the learning module, they know what's right versus what's wrong, and then the training, and then the, the test. Again, a few more examples, misaligned cones, and uh, uh, missing cones in some case. Uh, at the bottom example shows you uh, the lamp is out in the uh, CMS sign, the changeable message sign, that's pretty essential uh, pointing to where to merge. Right, in case you are driving through the work zone, that's almost like the last sign right in front of the taper. Uh, we did uh, get a lot of help from ODOT staff in putting together this module, mostly in terms of what's right versus what's wrong, what examples to use. And then we tested it on about 34 staff within the DOT um, in a couple of uh, uh, meetings. One, we had uh, close to 20, and then the other uh, time, 14. Again, right-hand side, I won't run through everything, but um, it shows you that we had a broad mix. Some uh, very familiar with work zones, operations, some not so familiar. But they were all DOT employees. Uh, the test performance on those 34 subjects, what you see here is uh, um, how they did, so x-axis is for each participant, y-axis is the percentage they scored, and the labels are, for example, the first bar on the left-hand side shows they did 79% uh, in identifying all the deficiencies in that construction zone that were presented to them, and there were uh, close to 18 or 19 deficiencies in the work zone. And then uh, you'll see some performed poorly, so the advantage of this is that a DOT can set up a threshold cutoff value, let's say 70%. Every inspector before they go to the work zone must score 70% at least on this test, right? So that could be a, um, a decision they make. We also administered a survey just to see, get a sense of what they thought of this new uh, technology using virtual reality. I think Cameron brought that up earlier. It's new to DOT, so we thought, and overwhelmingly, they all, uh, maybe it's the generation uh, that the DOTs employ now, they overwhelmingly agreed that VR is a good tool for training, not just inspectors, there were even examples of using it for uh, you know, pavement inspection, sign inspection, nighttime visibility, and so forth. So very promising um, results. Uh, closing and next step, so currently we are working on, the example I gave you uh, is on a interstate two to one lane work zone. Since then we've been uh, working on a flagger control. I'm from the Midwest. 
um, most of our mileage is two-lane rural roads, right? So any construction zones there, it's a flagger operation. So there is an individual with a stop sign paddle working on. So that's a big uh, uh, percentage of our work zones so we're building flaggers. And uh, the right-hand side, again, that's from the, uh, one of the recent movies, just to show that we want to increase the resolution of some of the virtual world because it's pretty hard to make it look very real, but uh, depending on how much time we have and resources, we're working towards that. And I want to close with uh, one of my uh, favorite quotes from the Matrix movie. So if you uh, watch this movie and know this character, Cypher, and uh, he's talking to this, uh, the bad guy uh, in this scene, and he tries to explain, you know, I know this steak doesn't exist. I know when I put it in my mouth, the matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realize? Ignorance is bliss. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll, I think I'll hold for any questions to the end.